G'day, welcome to part three of our little mini series traveling around Australia for 400 days. This is the Q&A. So we got some questions here that people have sent through. Uh, we're gonna answer them. If you've got other questions that you want to know, uh, let us know below and we'll try and answer them for you. So how long are you planning on traveling and would you do it full time? No, we wouldn't do it full time, um, but we are doing it indefinitely at the moment. But by indefinitely, we know that it's probably gonna end in the next two years. Um, we've already been on the road over a year. Um, so that'd be like about three years all up. Um, we just, we wanna travel for as long as we can because we're not, you know you're not gonna be able to do it again anytime soon. Um, so we wanna enjoy it while we can and do it while we can and while we're already on the road. Um, but we eventually do wanna go back home and settle into a forever home and, and build up a life back at home. Um, yeah, we've got we've got lots of friends and family back in Perth, um, and that'd be the primary reason for going back um, and spending time. But while the kids are young, um, you know, we're managing their schooling and whatever, and we're enjoying it. Um, we'll keep travelling. If anything changes, then we'll change our plans. Yeah, turn around. We're and we're not back. yeah stuck in stone or anything. We don't have any. Mm. Yeah, just we'll do what we feel like doing. Yeah. So any regrets? Uh, there's not really much like we there's been a few things that we bought with us that we didn't need fire um, pit we've used like once twice yeah I'd, I wouldn't bother taking it if but we've got it with us so we're just gonna keep carrying it around because we might use it a couple of times yeah um, we are flying back to Perth very shortly from Sydney um, and we booked that I don't know six or eight months in advance yeah. we probably could have flown out from Brisbane instead. probably would have been better would have been better and maybe cheaper but we I don't know made the choice that we yeah. thought was best well, at the we, time. Well, we took an educated guess and it probably wasn't <laughs> quite right. We were, yeah, sort of still around the Brisbane area and started to head south fairly hurriedly to get mm. to, to Sydney. Like, we haven't done the part between Brisbane and Sydney very well. Mm. Um, there's heaps of stuff that we would probably go back and do, maybe, on the way up if we yeah. go back up again. Yeah. Um, so... You can't see <clears> everything <throat> in the end of the day. Oh, definitely. Um, I regret not putting baits or something to try and keep the rats out of our engine bay earlier on. Um, yeah, if you haven't watched part two, we had a rat or maybe several get into the engine bay and they chewed into one of the coolant lines. Um, I don't think it's done any permanent damage, but you know, it's still something I would have rather avoid. Um, our with Sunday cruise, we spent six nights um, on a hired yacht with family. We probably should have booked that later on in the year. Like it, it didn't work with our plans. We had to do it then, but we copped some terrible weather. Yeah, if we wanted to do it with the family, we had to do it then because they had already booked their flights to come into Cairns, um, the family that was doing it with us. And then, so then, then it was an afterthought, oh, we should go and book a mm. cruise. And yeah. so that, that happened after. And that was the only way to do it because we didn't want to drive all the way up to Cairns and then drive all the way up to Early and then drive all the way up to Cape York because it was just, mm. it's good. we could have done it like late May, yeah. but it just was not going to work. So, well. so yeah, I mean, I regret not buying a block splitter. Seriously, if you have an axe and you're using it for camping to split wood, oh man, get rid of it, eh? Go and buy a block splitter for twenty-one dollars, I think, is what I <laughs> paid at, at Bunnings, and that thing is so much better. Like we do fires pretty often um, mm. for cooking on mainly, not really. I mean, if it's cold, we'll do it. Mm. Um, but yeah, don't use an axe for splitting wood; they're useless. And I didn't know that, so. Are you loving the D Max? Yeah. Um, Minus the cracks. <clears throat> yeah, love love is a pretty strong word. <laughs> now it's been. I, I like the D Max. Um, I spent a lot of time researching and getting that particular one. Um, we didn't pay very much for it. We modified it carefully to suit what we do, um, and it has done pretty well. We've we've had, you know, there's been quite a few issues with it. Um, no real showstoppers. Asides from um, the crack guards, which we'll get on to in a minute. Um, but it's been all stuff that's been covered by warranty. It's nothing that's really, except for maybe is it an aircon thing. No, that was no, all done. It's yeah. all done by warranty, so nothing yeah. has not been covered. No, it's. I think it's the perfect compromise for us. So yeah, our we came from an 80 series turbo diesel, you know, factory turbo diesel that I spent a fortune on. It was a tough tour and it was awesome, but um, it didn't have enough payload, it wouldn't have towed our Recon R2 properly, um, not nearly as safe, used a lot more fuel, you know, and then it had done nearly 400,000 Ks, so you've got those sort of gremlins that creep in, and, and 
when you're touring, the reliability, like number one, probably, I reckon, especially when you've got a young family. Like when you're single or a couple, and you can deal with those issues Stuck a on lot the side easier. Of the road but or yeah, stuff doing that with, with young family. And, and we love the canopy. Like canopy. having a canopy, like to not yeah. have. Like we've we've thing. talked about going to a wagon, um, and I cannot see myself in a wagon, like especially one of the highest spec ones that you're paying a lot of money for with young feral kids. And um, like a canopy is just gold. The fridge, um, so much room. I can throw firewood in there. Their bikes live in there. The drawers that we've got, like that we got, like two school drawers and yeah, there's a food drawer and a day awesome. use drawer. And it just does what we want it to really well. Um, mm. And a big part of that was the time that we spent thinking about what we wanted and experience from you know other vehicles and that um yeah so i don't think there's too many vehicles that would have done better um for the price we paid to like budget wise paid. it yeah. ticks it for budget and everything else yeah so it's six years old um 113 000 k's we we paid 38 grand for it um it was an x demo like 32 kilometers on the clock um and then, you know, decked it out, probably spent another 20 grand on it in accessories. Um, there's a post on our blog actually that goes into all that and um, the five year costs as well. I think it was about 90, 96K from memory was the total cost to own that D-Max for five years. Um, and that includes everything, all your maintenance and fuel and blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say I love it because we've had issues with it. Um, seven weeks off the road well not off the road but it was you know seven weeks stuck yeah because um, the inner guards cracked um and if you were doing like a 12 month lap oh, taking seven weeks you. out would be a nightmare but because we didn't have yeah. the time frame it was we were, like, we were okay with it. it didn't really matter yeah aaron got a job we got some money coming in it was fine yeah um, and we well the biggest thing was that we were near family and they let us go inside we their stayed house, in their like, house. It, was, it was it couldn't have worked better for great. us um, um, but yeah, we've had other issues like the aircon condenser, no, not a condenser, the evaporator cracked. Um, we've had a few random oil leaks from it. The body mounts turbo thing let go. The, the turbo. turbo, yeah, right at first. the very beginning. I think that was because it was a demo car though. They, they um, in the car yard, they just run it to keep the battery charged, and the actuator for the turbo was seized when I got it. Like I literally was driving it to get registered, and the fault light <laughs> comes on. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. So, but in terms of our lap, um, yeah, no, we are happy with it. I don't see us changing to anything unless... Um, something goes wrong with it or yeah, accident something. or or, whatever. or we start having lots of little niggly issues. That's mm. when I go, no, nah, mm. see you later. Um, but what we would get, I have no idea. Yeah, well, the car market now is sort of... Maybe we just go home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Too much maybe. to cost. Yeah. I don't know. So, how hard is it living in each other's pocket? Uh, it has its moments, but we're pretty good. We're pretty close family, aren't we? Like, there, even at home, we would spend a lot of time together. Yeah, like, we have our close little friends. We don't have, like, a high social life, heaps right. of people. Like, we're happy in each other's company. Um, yeah, he irritates me occasionally. But, yeah. so, what man doesn't? So does she. <laughs> no, the, um, it's probably mainly, like, the kids are the ones that generally cause the, uh, the friction. Dis the friction, yeah. They cause friction between each other, and then they also... Will be, yeah, like, we, we will get, annoy us. We'll be on edge and then we snap at each other um, or whatever. Um, so, I mean, we have our usual bickers or whatever. Sometimes you get upset with me over odds. Like, this, we haven't had any little... major blow ups though, have we? Oh, no. You just have a little crank for a while and then uh, yeah. come back and you love me again. I don't, we don't, I don't even go anywhere. <laughs> I can't go anywhere. <laughs> okay. No, nah, we're, we're just... pretty good. We, yeah. There'll uh, be a few sharp words or something, but nothing like, no one else would know anything's going on. Yeah, that's right. Um, and yeah, the kids, like it's just a bit hard with the kids because like even at night time, like if they're in their bedroom, you don't hear them mumbling and grumbling and tossing and turning. But Aaron basically is working about 30 centimetres away from where Ollie sleeps and Ollie takes forever to go to sleep. Um, and so, and he tosses and turns and he likes to ask me questions. And whereas if I'm not in there, he wouldn't be asking me the questions. So it can get, that time can get frustrating. Yeah. Too. Well, that, I don't um, mind that so much. It's when he's... Well, you get a bit cranky when you're trying to work. No, it's when he's naughty. Like he's... Yeah, but it's not... Kicking the... Um, it's not naughty. Like that's just a kid tossing and turning. He's trying to get yeah, to sleep. Yeah, yeah. And well, 
They don't, don't like straight, and Aaron gets cranky because he's trying to work and it's annoying him, and I'm no, just like... Sometimes he'll Ugh. sit in there and, you know, whack the curtains or kick his... I know, but that's just a kick. Yeah, but then yeah. I'm up on my up on the bed, and to get off the bed, you've got to get down. And with my back, it, like, it hurts to keep getting up and down, and then they'll call me, and then i get yeah, up, yeah, yeah. And, down, and then I start getting cranky. I just want to switch. Our, that's the worst I think our setup. Our setup probably makes it harder than it would be in a caravan. Yeah, because you, you just have, have a bit of space. space. But, um, like... And also, <laughs> yeah. I reckon as the kids are getting older and bigger, um, and we've spent, you know, the last 400 days together, it's, yeah. it's probably, I don't know, maybe a bit more difficult than it was when we left. Probably. Um, and, yeah, the kids are probably more comfortable in the environment. Maybe. Yeah. But yeah, so it's going to be great to go to Perth. And I'm like, okay, all right, we're going out for a meal without the kids. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> you don't get that. Like, we were lucky because we did have Aaron's mum and dad for, like, overall, what, like, about four or five months with us overall. Yeah, we, we didn't really mention that, um, did we? No. So we had them. So a couple of months, once or twice, we went out for meals. Or, but not only that, like, they would even just have them, like, in the evening after dinner, like, in their caravan. And we would... Well, whatever, we just, <laughs> just they had them. Mm. Or breakfast, often they'd be in the caravan for breakfast and they yeah, loved yeah, it. Yeah. Um, it just took them away from, and gave you a bit of space. Um, and the kids love it and we always like it. So, yeah, that was good. Yeah. Don't get that anymore. But mm. it's not been an issue. So, yeah, from what you've experienced, would you change your setup in any way? Um, no. We've spent a lot of time talking about this. Um, there's definitely times where, you know, caravan would be nice. Um, or even a tiny bit bigger hybrid. Yeah, but um, for what we've spent, um, the way that we travel and, you know, the way we like to do things, this suits us to a T. Mm -hmm. um, again, life is about perspective. Like you, we, we, when we are uh, ungrateful, you stand back and you think, well, we could be travelling around in our soft floor camper that we used to have. Okay. Um, and that would have been an absolute disaster compared to what we've got now. Like it's, I don't think you realize, uh, you don't know what you don't know. So mm -hmm. like you can be very happy and comfortable in a soft floor. Um, and then when you upgrade to something different, like you sort of see <clears throat> things differently. You see how much more comfortable it is in that yeah. hybrid. And we are pretty comfortable in it. Yeah, like you can't complain. Yeah, so yeah, like the outdoor toilet and shower when it's bad weather. Um, it's a little bit of a pain. Not, but... not grace. But if you, you could be traveling without one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you didn't, I remember my first shower in the bush and I was like, oh, this is so amazing. Yeah. Um, and that was just a, <laughs> like a bucket of hot water <laughs> yeah. and a pump. Um, um, but even like, like to have the toilet is so nice. So you're at a national park and you go to the toilet that we were at the other yeah, day. Feral. And that white, well, these ones, like most of them are really good, but this lot was just, there was so many bugs flying. It was just disgusting. So I was like, no, let's get the toilet up. Mm. And that's, it's nice to use. So you don't have to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toilets. yeah. So, yeah, I haven't seen anything um, from a hybrid perspective that would suit us better with our weights and all that. Yeah, um, we'd have to upgrade the car and you'd be paying double the price at least, probably yeah, triple for the, the price for, for the, the hybrid camper. And to me, that's just not worth it. I could travel for an extra year or two. Yeah, so like, that's, that's what I've got down here. Like, <laughs> really? if we went to a full size van, um, you know, new, new van, new tow vehicle, that would pay for three years on the road probably. Yeah. And in the set, current setup that we got. Yeah. So, so it doesn't make any sense. We're comfortable enough and happy enough traveling in what we got that we don't need to upgrade for any reason. The only reason why we would have to get something new is if something, it got damaged. Either one yeah, got or damaged. the kids got too big, which was still a few years yeah, away. Which I don't think will be before we settle back down. And then when we get back home, we wouldn't want a full-size caravan, I don't think, anyway. Nah, I don't think so. If anything, you'd have something like that and the kids would be outside in swags. Yeah. Um, so. Any downsides while living in a hybrid? Yes. Everyone asks about hybrid. Absolutely, there are downsides. A hybrid, if you think about it, by its very nature, is a compromise. It is a cross between a camper and a caravan. Um, and the, the definition of a hybrid is getting stretched more and more. It's and almost more a caravan days. often. Yeah, they, a lot of the um, hybrids that are being sold now are basically just a small, like I don't know what makes them a hybrid, they're basically just a small caravan. If they're, if they're the same width as a caravan or you know even just a little bit less and almost the same height, how, how is it a hybrid? We went into a showroom recently and one of the hybrids there, it was so big, like it was like almost was not monstrous. quite a caravan. I was like, well, you might as well be in a caravan if you're going to be yeah, in that. Yeah, that's it, right. Like the benefit, there was no benefit to, to yeah. it. Yeah. So, 
yeah, the downsides, um, you know, it is tiny inside our camper. Like, you, you, two people getting changed, good luck. Not, not going to happen. But it's not an issue unless we got bad weather, which occasionally we have had. But, yeah, I've got to go do it with the kids. So, yeah, limited storage inside for clothing. Um, not so bad when you're in good weather and it's warm. Yeah, because your shorts and your t-shirts and dresses or whatever don't take up much room. But as soon as you need jumpers, jumpers and, and that, pants yeah. out, like especially Aaron's, yeah. they just like two jumpers up, and a pair of pants and there's the draw gone. Yeah. Um, so that is a little bit hard, but we don't travel too much. In the and we've world. got we've got tubs that we oh. just move things around, so yeah. it works okay. Um, condensation, yeah, a bit of an issue inside, um, and it does get quite a bit colder inside than a, a fully insulated caravan. Um, but it also cools down quicker when it's hot. Yeah, and we've got a diesel heater, so it's not. Um, that much of an issue. The external toilet and shower, obviously, you know, not as nice as one inside, but if you had one inside our camp, it'd be feral anyway. I wouldn't want to so be in there when someone else is using it. Yeah, not, not good. The outdoor kitchen, um, if it's bucketing with rain or blowing mm -hmm. sand around, not much Or fun. if we haven't put the camper quite in the right spot and yeah. the sun in the afternoon when you're cooking dinner or whatever, like it's boiling in there, it can be a bit horrible, but only when it's really hot. Mm. Um, it's not been so, issue too much. Yeah, I mean, all those downsides, you know, we knew about them and we accepted them. Um, lots of positives that we like about the hybrid. Um, so, yeah, no, we, we really like it. Um, would you do anything differently in regards to vehicle trailer setup if you had to plan it again? Uh, odds and ends. Like, Little things, but nothing. Like, we wouldn't change a car, obviously. We wouldn't change a camper. Nah. Um, I would probably, like I've got a big space case in the D-Max up against the headboard where the heavy stuff goes. Um, I think I'd rather a drawer there just to make it easier to access. But the drawer costs more money so that's why we yeah, that's sort right. of didn't go that way. But in um, hindsight we should have spent the money. Oh probably. I would have put aluminium bash plates on there just to keep the weight, weight. down. Um, we did fit some accessories that I wasn't happy with. Um, the projected DC-DC. HPD catch can, um, our original chest fridge, like it was fine, but it was sort of made up with what we had left and it took up a lot of room and wasn't, you couldn't even see in the fridge, could you? No, not really. Like I'd see like, yeah, not down to the bottom. Like it was just awkward. Yeah. And we didn't get what had one of the drop down slides because they cost. Oh, well, and they're so heavy. Yeah. They're yeah, no good, I don't think. Um, so yeah, not really Nothing much. We, we might put a bit more solar on the car and the camper, but. Yeah. Not really, we're it's pretty happy really with it. Issue. What's the one thing you wish you'd planned better for? Um, oh, recently would have been like where we're traveling. Like Wiki Camps has been annoying because it's, um, if anyone who's used it will know there's useless. been issues since the upgrade and it's just made it really like more time consuming to try and um, research yeah. where you're going. And if we're not online, you can't see pictures anymore and things often don't load and it just has made it really hard for us to like research where we want to go. It's also being in an area that you are completely and utterly unfamiliar about. Like New you, South yeah. Wales is probably the one that you don't hear about, the state you don't hear much about, and mm. Victoria probably, that you don't hear about on the big, on the lap pages and Facebook groups and all that. No one seems to, I guess most people come from here maybe, no one seems to really do much around here. So, and because we're not from the East Coast, like we have no idea of what's really worth seeing and yeah. so it sort of makes it a bit harder to know even weather wise like I don't know whether you should be going to certain spots in like summer and anyway mm. so we're just winging it and it's just yeah. and because we had to be somewhere so we've sort of been trying to slowly do steps but not too slow so we're down at Sydney without having yeah. to do any big days. Usually it works okay but you know sometimes you think oh we should have stayed here for and longer or we've just whatever. found it really hard to find reasonable pricings in New yeah. South Wales. Yeah. So, how good or bad is it homeschooling the boys while traveling? Um, for them, it's awesome. They, like we probably spend five hours a week doing it. Um, it can be done anywhere. We do need internet occasionally, but for the most part, it's all book based. And that's just to watch little like YouTube episode yeah. like things or to like listen to stories and stuff. So it's not, the actual work is not on Yeah, the no, it's internet. really good. Um, for us, I think it's as good as it could be. Like Kalgoorlie School of the Air is awesome. Um, they send out a semester worth of work that you work through. You take photos and you send it back. Um, you know, you could go down the unschooling route. I'm not going to comment on that because that'll upset a few um, people. But um, that is... Not for us. Yeah, we, we decided we weren't doing that. Um, 
and that is quite common. And especially because we were going for longer than a year. Maybe if you're going for a year and you were just gonna yeah. concentrate on certain little bits. But I just wanted a school thing. I think sent out that, so I was covering the bases so that when the kids did go back to school that they sort of, yeah. Could and they're learning. I, you definitely underestimate what they learn when you're traveling, uh, even like external to school. They yeah. pick up so much stuff. So yeah, it, it is. Um, it's definitely not easy doing yeah, the homeschooling can, with the kids. Yeah. Like when it's warm, um, and just to motivate them to get them to do it. Yeah, probably the main thing is that you're the parent and doing the teaching. So yeah, like, they'll say, "I don't want to do it. Yeah. I don't want to do schoolwork." And then like they wouldn't do that to at school. Um, well, but not they our do kids. It, yeah, they do it to us. to us. So yeah, I mean, we there are days where we skip it. There are days where we do longer times. Mm. Um, shorter times whatever but yeah we and probably because we stopped for seven weeks we did um i was doing three days of school work a week with the boys and i sort of set it up a bit more like yeah. a school day and so we did smash through a fair bit of school work then so we finished up it was five weeks early five weeks early yeah which was really good so we've had from what middle of november off yeah. um, and we'll have it off until february yeah, so, but I think there's a lot of variables here, like who you end up going schooling through. Um, yeah, some of the distance eds are horrible. Some of them Apparently, are they expect you to be online and you need to do like five plus hours of work a day. And yeah. like for those people, I feel sorry because there's no oh, way. You wouldn't enjoy your lap. But also, yeah. um, the differences with kids, like some kids are very clever and they'll pick it up, no problem at all. And other kids, you've got to spend a long time teaching. Um, yeah. So, do you have to send tests in to make sure they hit the mark? Um, so, so they, so Ollie, on. yeah, so Ollie does at the end of each maths book, like they'll do, uh, um, have like a test page where we're not meant to help them, and then you just send in pictures of that. Um, Cooper is still, was still in kindy this year, and he's in preschool next year, so he didn't have any tests, but um, you just take photos of all the work that they do and send it through. Mm. Um, Ollie did have a phonics test that I had to sit down and do with him and send straight through on a certain day. So what made you decide to pack up and travel? Well, we first probably got the bug when we were, when was it, in the Kimberley, like 2015, when yeah. we did a five week trip at the Kimberley, just Aaron and I before kids. Mm. Um, and that was in the part where we were trying to have kids and it wasn't working. and the suggestion was that we might have to go on like the waitlist for IVF or something and they were saying that it was like a 12 month waitlist and we were like well if that happens why don't we just go around and do a lap around Australia for 12 months mm. anyway it didn't end up happening and the kids came but um we always since then had that dream and knew that once the kids got to a certain age that that's sort of what we wanted to do but we just wanted to wait until like the kids like the youngest like Cooper was old enough to not be in full-time nappies not needing a day sleep old enough to sort of look after himself a bit and you could sort of trust him to like wander a bit without like wandering off yeah um, it's like we've always enjoyed the traveling even with the kids like cooper went camping when he was like 18 days was his yeah. and it was like 35 degrees or whatever so we and my annual leave like probably 95 percent of it has been used on traveling around wa yeah any holiday we went on it was always camping we, we have basically. always loved it um, and not because it's cheap or whatever we just like being outdoors yeah, so we, I mean, I've, we've done a bit of overseas stuff, but not that much really no, in the scheme sense. of things. Normally only if it's like other family are going and we... Yeah. So uh, our DMAX was also on a no-voted lease, uh, originally a five-year one, and we took that out knowing full well that we wouldn't leave to do a lap prior to that being finished. Um, so we actually left, like it was uh, around the same week that the, <laughs> the lease finished, uh, which was pretty funny. Um, and I was I was getting worn out. I was in a senior management position, um, looking after a busy manufacturing plant. Um, you know, on call 24/7, lots of people um, to look after. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. But I was uh, I was getting weary. I was getting worn out over it. Um, in conjunction with having you know two young kids at home, um, plus running the blog. Um, and I think you were getting over being at home as well. Because right? we were on like a tiny block. So like we had like 380 square metres or whatever. Yeah. And so like I spent most of my time at home, like mm. with the kids and stuff. And I don't know, we just needed something different. Yeah, we, we wanted to go. And it, I mean, it all seemed to come together. Um, even the fact that 
like your mum was looking for a place yeah. at the same time that we decided we would rent our property out. So like it just, it all fell into place really well. Um, and we, we wanted to spend some time together as a family. Like it's so easy for mm -hmm. buying your kids are teenagers and then, you know, they don't want anything to do yeah, with you. Yeah, well, you have to say why the kids do want to spend time with Yeah, you. so I thought that we would probably look back and regret it. Um, if we didn't go, yeah. Mm. So what does it mean when places say fully self-contained? Depends. Yeah, this depends on who is looking after the campground. So it could be private property or it could be Shire Council, you know, Caravan Park, whatever. They all have different definitions. Um, some places it's just a toilet that you've got to have, and that can be anything, a portable toilet. Um, others it means a grey water tank. We have come across some really random ones that say permanently mounted um, toilet. And shower. Um, and shower And grey water system. Um, a lot of the places don't care that want self-contained um, it's just a toilet yeah just a toilet so the tent um, side of it I don't know they always get rejected I suppose self-contained stuff is pretty um, generally they want you to be in something. sometimes they say tents okay yeah uh, or tents allowed you yeah. just have to have your toilet like a lot of the hip camps are like self-contained but it's just that you need your toilet yeah oh. so and we're in a funny position because our our thing is a camper trailer, um, but you know sometimes it can be a caravan. Also, oh, it's what is it? It's registered. <laughs> it's registered as a caravan. caravan, but it's insured as a camper trailer. So, yeah. well, sometimes we're a camper trailer. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's not. Caravan. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, it comes down to whoever's making the rules up for that particular campground, um, and you can usually find that out. In general, most places are pretty good. Um, most places don't care. Yeah, so uh, on to the next thing. Do you have to have a grey water tank? Uh, oh, do we, have, do a we have a grey water tank? Yeah, we do. Sort I, of. I nicked like, not a, not a tank, a plumbing nah, one. No, it's a anything. portable 20 litre tote, which I took from Dad. Um, that was one of his backup water containers when they left. Mm. Um, and I've only got it for our sink water. Um, we can't contain our shower water because it's you know falls onto the ground from outside. Um, we do carry the grey water tank on the back of the camper. Um, does not having a grey water tank limit where you can camp? This, Very rarely. Oh man, this thing is a, a mountain over a, a molehill. Like seriously, people say you've got to have a grey water tank. What an absolute load of rubbish. Um, so many people have in their minds that in national parks you have to have a grey water tank. Yeah. And that's so not the there is There is one campsite that I know of in a national park in Australia that you've got to contain your grey water. Um, mm. And then what you'll find is that the campgrounds that do want you to contain your grey water are generally the rest stops uh, on the edge of town or whatever. That are in a car park sort of thing and you're on bitchman and they yeah. just don't want you... And they're not the places stuff. that we go to camp and you know, we don't like them. So in our last, in our 400 days, we've had two campsites that required grey water collection mm -hmm. um and one of them we used our portable setup and the other one we just skipped yeah that was a um, quick town yeah. yeah yeah you so do not need them um and there's normally plenty of other options around they might not be yeah. right in town or free or whatever but there's there's options like we've never yeah we haven't been an issue no, people make a big deal about it so best spots that you've camped at in each state um south australia memory cove Micara Station and Swinsor Rocks. Um, but you could come up with so oh, many heaps of them. more. Like, oh, oh. Victoria, McLennan's Punt, um, Jamison Creek Crossing, Air River Crossing. That was nice. Which you would not get a caravan into. No, um, we barely got ours set up into. Blanket Bay, Granny's Flat, Fry's Flat. Anywhere in the Vic High Country was absolutely awesome. Mm. Um, and then in Queensland, Mialo Creek, uh, Lake Tinaroo. Yeah, Lake Tinaroo. Cohen Free Camping, North and South, uh, Aloo Beach, yeah. Jardine Station, Blenko Falls, the diggings near Yungella. Oh, I never remember how Yalunga. to say it. There's too many. Yungella. I don't know, yeah. whatever it is. Notch Point, Stanage Bay, um, and the Gorge campsite. But, yeah, there's been so many good ones. Do you think you could have done it gasless with the right battery and diesel setup? So we've got 230 amp hour in the D-Max of lithium, 340 in the camper, so 570 total, um, and we run our induction cooktop most of the time, but it's still nowhere near big enough to do it full time. On a day like today when it's overcast, um, 
you would have to have a ridiculous level of solar to um, be able to do it or to be driving around a lot which we don't do too much um, and well, yeah, occasionally campsites even like your campsite you can't you, get enough you sun you've get got sun. shade there's trees you're not always yeah. going to be able to park in full sun we've had a surprising number of overcast days like mm. and even in the dry season up further north like yeah. you could have a week of overcast weather um, and yeah if you didn't have gas <laughs> you'd be stuffed so for us we've got gas anyway because that was the original fitment on the camper and we've got a portable induction um, that we use but we use the gas for our hot water for the shower um, and for and the, the weather. So, you know, you could remove it all, but what's the point? Um, when it, we do use it when there's overcast days um, and it also gives you some redundancy. Um, electronics are fickle things and induction cooktops, inverters, whatever, they do let go. And if you don't have gas, um, You'll be eating raw sausage. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're in trouble. Um, so in my mind, yeah, you can go gasless, but there's a diminishing return, I reckon. Um, I don't really see the point, to be honest. Um, you not spend for us a, anyway. You spend a lot for not much gain. Um, composting versus chemical toilet. We can't really comment on that. We don't have um, a composting or toilet. We've hardly it. used them. Um, and we've got an external portable unit. Mm. So I don't, I don't think you can get composting. I haven't researched, I haven't, it's not an issue for us, so. Yeah. Uh, what's broken on the van on our lifestyle, 2018 lifestyle recon? Not much. RT. The door handle, it because it gets used so much and yeah. maybe slammed a few times by kids. Yeah. Um, um, we did have a front hatch seal come off mm. um, and some bad tyre wear from an incorrect alignment. Um, we got tiny little, like, hole, like in the sock yeah, up the top, there's like yeah. tiny little cracks starting to come around maybe. Um, yeah. But it's not letting water in or anything, so no, nah, no, no, it's fine. It's and just... I mean, you guys should know that that van has been used. Like we've probably done, it'd be close to seven hundred days, mm. seven hundred nights in that van. Now it has been used and used and used. Yeah. Um, and it, my like, kids like, <laughs> you know, kids. Yeah. No, it's been um, awesome. Really well built. And um, you know, I've got to say, we've got no affiliation with Lifestyle, but their Aussie built stuff, I've got a lot of respect for it. Um, we. I wrote a post when we first got ours. There's some things that we don't like about ours. Um, some of them are minor, some of them are you know, reasonably major, but they've all been rectified now in their new models, um, which is a testament to their you know, R&D and, and desire to build a product that people really like. Um, would you go a hybrid or a full caravan next time? Well, next time it'll probably just be us. <laughs> so, and we'll probably be older, so it may be a caravan by then, but... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I can't imagine that we'd be able to fit another lap in with the kids. Yeah, they'll, um, they'll be too tall to physically fit in and the they, bunks. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then they'd be like high school almost, like by the time we settled back in mm. and then we're ready to go again. And I don't think I'd take them out for high school, so... Yeah. We may do like, like take them out for a term and the school mm. holiday to the side and do trips like that. Um, so whether we might even just swag it, I yeah, don't know we'll what see. We'll see. I, I don't know. They like the you get a small hybrid, then like a big hybrid, and then a caravan, and the the price difference between them is fascinating. Um, like over <clears> a <throat> big hybrid and a small van, I'd probably just go the small van. Yeah. I don't know that there's the benefit. The the big hybrids often are very heavy. Yeah, um, and, and almost the same size as a caravan. So, yeah, I just don't see. And three times the price sometimes. Yeah, I just, definitely. I just don't, I don't know that the value would be there for us. Mm. So we'll see. Um, but anyway, we're going to travel for yeah another year a or two. See, see how it goes. Um, heading to Perth now for Christmas with the family. That should be Flying. awesome. Flying, yeah. yeah. Five weeks there. And then we'll keep travelling down towards uh, Victoria. And then the plan is to turn around and head north again up the east. east. Do more, do yeah, up mm. the east. Yeah, up the east coast, but do more of the inland stuff yeah. maybe. Yeah. We think we actually enjoy more of the inland, um, like water holes and rivers yeah. and lakes rather than the beach. Mm. That's what we've found. We, we well, don't we, mind the beach We're camps, pretty spoiled but, for beaches in WA. But we just seem to actually enjoy exploring mm. like the inland bits a bit more. So yeah. that's what we're probably going to do. So that's it. Hopefully you guys have uh, enjoyed it. Any questions, comments, let us know. Please subscribe, thumbs up, um, support the channel. We really appreciate it. And uh, 
yeah, if you see us around, say hello. We like having a chat to people. Yeah. The kids sometimes take a while to warm up and won't say hello straight away, but you know. See you later.